tell me if you can relate to this. You've poured hours into creating what you think is an awesome vlog. You've had a really cool experience, maybe you went on a really fun trip or just had a really productive day at work and you documented every moment. You've spent hours editing and you're finally ready to hit upload. Only once it's published, it's like crickets. A week later and oof, it's still only got 12 views. Hey, I have totally been there and I know how much it sucks to pour your heart and soul into a video that ends up getting seen by pretty much no one. But listen, this isn't inevitable and despite what the negative self-talk playing on repeat in your head might be saying, you do have something interesting to share with the world and there is an audience out there for you. You just need to find the right strategies and techniques to share your life and experiences in an interesting way that connects with your ideal audience. And that's exactly what I'm gonna show you how to do in this video. By the way, this video is sponsored by Storyblocks, a service that has been helping me make my YouTube videos more engaging and dynamic since 2018. Yes, I have been a subscriber of their service for so long, so I'm super excited to be partnering with them on this video, but I'll chat more about Storyblocks a little later on. Okay, so in this video, I'm gonna cover three mistakes that I think are the biggest contributors to a lot of beginner creators' vlogs kind of flopping. Mistake number one is not speaking to your audience in a personal way. I think a lot of beginner vloggers start out by imagining that either no one is watching or that everyone is watching. And here's what I mean by that. I think a lot of folks have the inclination to refer to their audience as y'all or you guys, like just speaking to this generalized, vague group of people that are watching your videos but like they might not actually be watching your videos yet because you maybe just get like 12 views. And this kind of generic referral to the group at large can feel sort of impersonal and it can feel even at some points ingenuine if you happen to come across a video like this and like you can tell from the view and sub count like there isn't really a you guys just yet. But I understand why so many beginner vloggers do this because it feels like, well, isn't this what the big vloggers are doing? Like they would refer to their audience as y'all or even maybe like a cutesy fan name or something like that. Here's the thing. In my experience, especially when you are getting started, you are much better off imagining when you are creating your videos as if you are speaking to one person. This will not only help you talk in your videos in a more like personal and intimate way, which really connects better with the end viewer, but it will also help you to imagine who that viewer might be, which will help to shape the story that you're trying to tell, the message that you're trying to bring across, and will ultimately help you create your videos for the viewer rather than just, you know, a sort of directionalist vlog that you're kind of making for yourself. Which by the way, making vlogs just for yourself to look back on later, totally valid, totally fine. But I assume that if you click on this video, you're here because you want to get views. And so I'm, I'm trying to help you do that. <laughs> Think about it. When somebody is watching your video, they are probably sitting there by themselves. I mean, maybe with like another person in their family or whatever, but most likely they're watching it solo. So when they're referred to as like a group of people, there's like this weird disconnect because it's like, well, I'm here by myself. <laughs> so I recommend when you speak directly to your audience, say you instead of like y'all or you guys. And really, really try to keep in mind who that potential end viewer is. Because trust me, your vlogs are going to be more interesting, more engaging, and more purposeful when you think about who the ideal person to watch them at the end is. That's what will take you from just kind of creating this vague video of your day to having a sense of who you want to watch it and what you want them to get out of it. And it's just gonna make your videos a lot more intentional and engaging. Mistake number two, always saying and then instead of but or therefore. Okay, this is the biggest thing that separates beginner newbie vloggers from successful experienced vloggers, and that is storytelling skills. Most vlog creators at the start fall into the trap of just simply presenting their day or their experience in a linear timeline. Instead of communicating the causation from one scene to the next and really expressing that rise and fall of action and bringing in the tension and the reveal and the payoff. I think one of the best shorthands for these big kind of intangible storytelling concepts is the but 
therefore rule, which was created by the creators of South Park, Matt Stone and Trey Parker. They did this really quick video for MTV back in the day where they explain how they approach telling a concise and engaging 20 minute episode. We can take these beats, which are basically the beats of your outline. And if the words and then belong between those beats, you're so one of the quickest ways to determine if your video is simply like a linear timeline of da 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 or if it's something that's interesting and grabs the viewer and keeps them engaged is to ask yourself from one scene to the next is your story essentially saying this happened and then this happened and then this happened or is your story saying this happened because this happened therefore this happened but this happened, therefore this happened. Okay, let me give you a practical example in like the lifestyle content niche because I know talking about it in this sort of like general way can be a little bit confusing. So let's talk about a day in the life vlog and how you might be able to apply the but therefore rule to that. Okay, so in option A, I can frame my day in the life as simply a laundry list of events or tasks that I went through. So this is the and then version, and it goes like this. I woke up and started my day, and then I checked my to-do list, and then I made a coffee, and then I did some work, and then I felt kind of anxious, and then I did some positive affirmations and got back to work. Snooze fest, right? Like if you're still watching the video, I'm impressed because that is just a list of what somebody did during their morning, right? Kind of boring. Okay, but here's the but therefore because version. And hopefully you can see how I'm taking a regular day, regular day and turning it into a story. This morning I woke up knowing that I had a massive to-do list to tackle today, but I was utterly exhausted. My list seemed totally insurmountable, but deadlines are deadlines and I needed to get it all done. Therefore, I made myself a coffee and I got down to work. Because I made myself a coffee, I was super productive with my work but all the caffeine made me really anxious. I was really starting to doubt myself. I didn't think I could complete my work for the day, but I also didn't think I was very good at my work in general, just total imposter syndrome moment. Therefore, I had to remind myself of my mantra, plan your work and work your plan. Everything can be done if I make a plan and execute on it. So I reminded myself of my affirmations, shrugged off my imposter syndrome and got back to work. So here you can hopefully see how you can take just the regular actions and tasks of your day and turn it into a story with rising and falling action and a little bit of a message at the end. I really think that you can always find the takeaways or the moral of the story or the whys in your everyday scenario if you think about them a little bit deeper. And I think that's what can really add some extra meaning to your videos and some purpose. It leaves the viewer with maybe some kind of encouragement or something to think about. And it gives them a reason to watch your video beyond just like, oh, what did Katie eat for breakfast today? Well, most people do not care about that. But if I'm able to take what I ate for breakfast or like my little morning routine and turn it into a positive message or an encouraging message or provide some kind of value to you above and beyond just here's what I did today. That's what's going to make people want to watch your videos and including that tension and release and the rise and fall of action throughout the story is what's going to keep people watching once they click on it. So this is how you can really start making vlogs that not just the people in your everyday life want to watch, right? You know, my friends who know me might be interested in seeing my cutesy morning routine, but people on the internet who have no idea who I am, aren't gonna be that engaged with that. But if I'm able to provide something that is encouraging or inspiring or entertaining in some way, like that's gonna be what makes other people wanna watch my videos. And that's the foundation of actually growing a channel and an audience on YouTube. Mistake number three, telling and not showing. Okay, so the biggest problem that a lot of creators run into once they sort of realize I need to shift from this and then format into something that's more but therefore because, like a real story, the issue that comes up is they don't have enough footage. Because here's the thing, if you want to have an engaging and dynamic vlog, you need to be able to show the audience what you're doing or thinking or feeling instead of just telling them. For example, tell me which version of this mini vlog is more interesting for you to watch. 
After spending four months earlier this year traveling around the US in our converted camper van, we decided it's time for an adventure a little bit further from home. And here's the thing, we kind of like traveling off the beaten path a little bit, so for this trip, we're headed to a kind of less common part of Europe. So earlier this year, we were traveling around in our self-converted van named Vanji, but now we kind of feel like going on a trip somewhere different. So we're actually gonna fly to one of the least visited areas of Europe which is exciting. I mean, I think it's really fun to travel off the beaten path a little bit. You never know what you might come across and what you might learn. So let's go on this trip. Okay, so I think it is pretty obvious that the first version is way more compelling as a vlog. People have come to YouTube to see a video. You need to deliver on those visuals. Otherwise, it might as well just be like, a blog post or a tweet. But if you've come to the editing stage and you've realized that you really don't have enough footage to show all of those aspects of your story, that is where the sponsor of today's video, Storyblocks, comes in. And boy, do I depend on Storyblocks a lot in those tight circumstances where I'm like, dang, I need to show this somehow, but I do not have a clip for it. Okay, so if you're not familiar, Storyblocks is a subscription-based stock footage library. I've personally been using it for years to find the right visuals to tell a great story in my vlogs. With your Storyblock subscription, you get access to over a million video clips, sound effects, music, animation templates, and more. If you need something to represent what you're telling about in your story, all you have to do is go to Storyblocks, click in that search bar, and look up something like a busy airport terminal, a barista making a latte, LA traffic, typing on a laptop. Once you start looking, you'll find that it is very easy to get exactly what you need to fill in the blanks of your visual story using Storyblocks. Plus, I've recently learned about Storyblocks plugin for Premiere Pro, which is a total game changer. Once you've installed the plugin, you can access your Storyblocks library directly inside a panel in Premiere Pro. So while you're editing, if you come across a stretch of your video that's feeling kind of slow or boring, you can easily just bop over to the Storyblocks panel and search up some kind of stock footage that would suit the story that you're telling. Storyblocks has also come in handy for me in circumstances where I can't really capture the type of visual that I'm looking for. For example, back in the summer, I went to Quebec City and I made a travel vlog about it for my second channel and I forgot to bring my drone with me. And I really wanted to have like a nice establishing shot, an aerial shot of the city. So when I got home and I was editing my video, I just popped over to Storyblocks and searched up like Quebec City aerial shot and I found exactly what I needed. So if you want to up level your vlogs and make them more visually interesting and dynamic, even when you don't have the chance or you forgot to shoot your own footage, then definitely sign up for Storyblocks using the link in my description. Once you pay your monthly or annual fee, you'll have access to all the stock footage that you need without complicated a la carte or like credit systems. You pay your subscription and then you can download exactly what you need. You don't have to worry about it. So try out Storyblocks for yourself. Trust me, it is gonna be a game changer for your vlogs. Check it out at the link in the description. Truly at the end of the day, if you want to have a successful vlog, you need to have good visuals to go with it. I'm a big fan of Johnny Harris, who is a YouTuber, video journalist, and I really find his thought process or approach to creating videos really compelling. He sort of has this concept of why is this a video or justifying the fact that the story you're telling should be told in the visual format. When I go to a place with my camera, the story doesn't exist unless there are visuals to help explain that story, visual anchors. What story should be told in video and what should not? If there are a million good stories that should be reported on in the world, my philosophy is that 900 should be told as videos. The rest should be text or photo essays. We should only put the work into making a video for stuff that's inherently visual that needs to be explained or understood visually. So that's my main guidepost. Because ultimately, if your video is gonna be just you mostly talking to the camera and not showing a lot of clips, then maybe it should just be a podcast. 
Maybe it should just be a blog post. So really think about when you're crafting your video, why is this a video and how can I make the most of this medium that I'm working in? When you fully embrace that, you're really gonna allow yourself to stand out from other sort of beginner vloggers on the platform, take advantage of what people come to YouTube for, which mostly is the visuals, the visual storytelling. That's what's really gonna help you engage an audience and grow your channel. Speaking of growing your channel, if you are thinking about making vlogs, you might be trying to decide should I start an entire second channel just for vlogs? Can I make vlogs on the channel that I've already got going? I've made a video talking about exactly that to help you kind of sort out what your strategy should be when it comes to growing your audience around your vlog content. So check out that video next. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having adventures and following your dreams and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.